there isn't a whole lot of controversy about how you treat a pancreatitis. There's not a lot of controversy about how you, you treat flea allergy dermatitis. But, but when you have uh, behavioral problems, I think there's a lot of controversy. There's controversy within our profession, different approaches to doing it, and as long as they're humane and positive, we all end up hopefully on the same page. But there's bigger controversy between the lay trainers and the public in general that do things like that. Um, in other words, you go to trainers, you see trainers, and the trainers are either on the positive mode nowadays or they're on the old kick of choking, pronging, e-collars, etc., punishment, and that's a real problem. So going back to the veterinarian first, at least ask the behavioral questions so you can do your role as a medical veterinarian and rule out medical problems. Okay. At least ask the behavioral questions so that you can determine if there's a, a component that's veterinary behavior. What I mean by that is anxiety, abnormal behavior, unusual behaviors, behaviors that say this doesn't need a trainer, this needs a diagnosis first and maybe some drugs. Ask the questions because cognitive dysfunction and senior brain aging is something that we can, all of these we can sometimes treat, slow, improve with our knowledge as veterinarians. Then you get onto the behavior side where maybe if you have somebody in your practice, technician, because there is a, a behavioral technician group now, and an academy, a, a certification for behavioral technicians. Maybe you have your staff trained. Maybe the veterinarians are trained. Maybe you have to refer the case but know the people you're referring to because positive training, not dominance, leadership, physical techniques, is not only the best thing to do and the most humane thing to do, but documented to be the way to improve behavior rather than perhaps getting bitten by your pet. Well, I'm glad you brought this up. Um, I I'm uh, currently involved or embroiled in a little controversy between my wife and daughter. Uh, we have a uh, uh, Dutch uh, Frisians, uh, big. Okay. They're kind of big. They're, they're about the kind of horse you'd see on uh, on these jousting things on TV from time to time. They're kind of a small draft horse, and uh, and my daughter wants to use the whip to get the horse to do things. And my wife has actually gone through uh, and taken some training classes from one of the popular trainers, uh, learning the more uh, the more uh, positive reinforcement approach. And uh, and they've had some really pretty uh, ugly battles about. What's the right way to do it? Uh, I agree with my wife. I think that that she's in fact she's come a long way with the horse. And I know horses aren't your gig, but but um, the principles are the same. The principles are the same. That's right. It's the science of learning. Right. Forget terminology. Who's got to be the boss? Who's got to be the parent? Who's got to be the leader? It's the science of learning. It applies to all species. You can be talking about horses. You can be talking about young children. You can be talking about your dog or your cat. You reinforce the behaviors what you want that you want, and you'll get more and more and more of them. It's much quicker and faster sometimes to punish and suppress behaviors, but that stops undesirable. It doesn't train desirable. And there's lots of undesirable that your horse or dog can do, but there's only one way to get it right or two ways to get it right. right. So when you choose a trainer, the uh, American professional dog trainers now have certification. Those trainers learn learning principles, they learn science, they learn how to reinforce and shape. Words like clicker training, good sign. Words like reinforcement, good sign. Words like uh, head halters, very good for directing and leading pets. That's the most physical you have to get. Vice versa, words like choke, prong, alpha, pressing to the floor, um, rollovers, etc. That's confrontational. That could lead to fear and anxiety. That could lead to aggression. A recent study did show that there were more aggression when you used confrontational techniques with an aggressive dog than if you didn't. So it's just the wrong thing to do, even though it might work. And then if you get to the most basic tenet of uh, what we do, the five freedoms, one of them is freedom from pain and discomfort. So if you're using a behavioral technique that causes discomfort or pain for your pet, and there is another technique that might take a little longer, a little more work, that is free from pain and discomfort, use that. A good example would be the word negative punishment. Negative punishment is when maybe you're playing with your pet, it's doing something inappropriate, you take the reward away. Great. You're playing with your pet, it nips or bites, you give it a swat, you pin it to the ground. 
Well, that pet thinks, boy, you're playing pretty rough, or it gets fearful, or it bites back, and you get into real problems when you use positive punishment, because guess what if it doesn't work? You raise the level, and you get more irate, and you get more physical, and you switch to that prong collar, and you switch to worse. What happens when you use negative punishment? You lock the dog up a little bit longer. Right. You, you, you back off a little bit longer. You can't get more painful or more You intense. keep stepping it up. You know, the, you, yeah. you're, you're trumping punishment with, and they're just up in the behavior. You get used yeah. to it, you habituate, you have to raise the level, and it yeah. becomes very inhumane. So no punishment and training. Let's get that down pat. Well, you know, the, I have this funny thing that's happened over the years, you know, where people say, you know, this is the dumbest dog. And this is on the yeah. number two DHPP. You know, I, I had them in when they were six weeks, now it's nine weeks. Yeah, yeah. How's house training going? You know, fair. I just say fair. This is the dumbest dog. You know, and I said, well, tell me what's going on. He said, you know, we go out for a walk, and, uh, and, uh, the dog will urinate, and so I take it back in the house, and as soon as we get in the house, the dog defecates. Well, and I tell people, I said, well, does he like to walk? Oh, he loves to walk. I said, and let me, let me guess, if he defecates outside, then the walk's over with, right? Yeah, the walk's over with. So we have to allow the walk to go on for a little longer so that, so that you're really punishing the dog by taking him inside after they have a BM. Lots of times, it's cold out of here, let's come on in. That negative punishment yeah. again, if they can make the But they don't even know they're doing it. Yeah. yeah, they don't even know they're doing the, it. The important thing to realize is, use house training as an example. There's one place you want your pet to eliminate, whether it's a mat, that you're training indoors, or outdoors. That's it. Therefore, you can spend all of your time teaching your dog where not to eliminate through punishment and all kinds of things that don't work. Or you can just say, I have to keep taking it. I have to know a schedule. I have to reinforce it. And one good way to reinforce is with little treats and some positives. But another good way to reinforce, after they eliminate, take them for their walk. Let them play. So right. the faster they do it, the faster they get play, not the faster they get to go inside. Right. So you're exactly right. It doesn't matter what problem we're talking about. If you can teach the pet the proper way to do it, then you don't have to do anything physical. And unfortunately, some of the most popular TV shows out there are making it, owners think it's their fault and they have to be more domineering or more alpha or whatever the word. And the answer is the dogs have the genetics. You have to know the learning principles. Some are a little harder to train than others, but usually you can get where you want to go with rewards. Now, do you watch this stuff on TV just out of curiosity? You get upset about it, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's a... Positive is... I mean, some of these trainers use very positive, what they call energy, confident, consistent. See, owners aren't consistent. At least these trainers are. But when you switch over to that punishment mode, then you're scaring your pet and you're ruining that relationship. So I think a lot of people try to work within their principles instead of understanding normal behavior and understanding learning and go to some behavior lectures and read some good books and if you don't know what those good books are make sure they're positive if they got clicker training in them if they've got certain authors in them that are positive trainers that's a good way to go well let me ask you this should as veterinarians should we have those books in our sometimes you know we have our waiting room and i have people magazine that tells what's going on with britney spears this week but you know, should maybe we have more books like that in the office? Sure. Have so, Karen Pryor's Don't Shoot the Dog or her new Animal Minds book. Have some books by some of our colleagues who write positive training books. But what I always recommend, Wayne Hunthausen and I did a set of AHA pamphlets. So there's about 14 or 16 pamphlets that you can give on specific topics. Those are veterinary related. Debbie Horowitz and I did a whole CD of LifeLearn handouts. And one of the things there is a reading list. You don't actually have to have the books, but if you have a reading list, that helps. And one of my favorite things things of all, go home with this principle and you've got it made, have a website with links and you make sure those links are to the sites you want your clients to go to. One topic should be behavioral links and if you don't know where to go, go to the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior online, avsabonline.org and they have position statements on punishment, on reward training, on dominance and why it's not right, on what wolves really are, families, not packs. You wouldn't believe the information that's out there, but link your clients to those because there's lots of wrong places right. to find on the web. So well, a website with links. Repeat that address again for us. A-V-S-A-B, avsab online, A-V-S-A-B online dot org. You can also learn about veterinary behaviors from D-A-C-V-B dot org, but the position statements are on that American Veterinary society site and make good links to your site and your clients will buy the right books and go to the right places. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that. You know, I think it's one of the things that, and I'm, and I'm perfectly guilty of not doing enough behavioral uh, 
things in our clinic, mostly because I'm because really there's so much information out there. And I'm always just afraid I'm going to um, be in the wrong, you know, m make a misstep or say the wrong thing. But right. resources, right. Uh, even that book that uh, Dr. Horowitz wrote has a CD in the back with handouts you can print. The book that I did has a CD in the back with handouts you can print. AHA I mentioned, LifeLearn I mentioned, have things for your clients that aren't just medical or also behavioral. And at every puppy visit, we give a socialization handout, a nipping and biting puppy handout, a house training handout, and a crate training so they get started off right. Well, we do the same thing. And, and, uh, and I got to tell you, I think most clients are more interested in uh, um, those sorts of things than they are about high antigen mass vaccine and uh, low egg cell passage and you know all the we, we, we just like tell your clients your vaccines are today here's the deworming medicine here's the heartworm prevention come back next month now here's a whole bunch of behavioral issues right, right. especially when they're young puppies oh. so they'll just listen to you on the medicine if they have questions they'll ask you but you can have that on your website and handouts too sure. well good yeah. well hey you know what I really appreciate you coming in today I think veterinarians uh, probably we don't do enough with behavioral medicine and uh, um, you know, I think all of us probably get more behavioral questions than we care to think we get. And uh, If you save that pet's life and if you improve that bond, it's good for you too. So what's good for the pet is good for the vet.